And now, coming to you from the Pensado Media Center, powered by Westlake Pro. How a plug-in and data can get you paid, our guest will share. Announcing the winner of the Pensado and Daba contest today, brand new ITL from the Master Blaster. Let's get it started, or let's get it started in here. Let's get it. You're at the place. It's Pensado's place. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Get, get glad to see you. Glad you dropped by. What was that accent? That's, that's my St. Louis accent, everybody. Oh, okay. Okay. Not a little Uzi Vert. It's hot in her. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, you went back to Nelly, St. Louis? I'm celebrating my, I'm celebrating my you're, ancestry. You're absolutely, yeah. brother. Right on. No, you know what? I just like, there's some words that just sound musical when you say them mm -hmm. a little different, you know? Right. I like that. Okay. So. Well, can we do a list of those, like like a batter's box or an ITL one of those words? Right arm. <laughs> okay, we'll do the right arm. <laughs> Why don't we get back to the show, you think? I think we should. Um, hey, gang, it is great to be back with you. Thanks for your likes and subscribes. Thanks also to the coolest partners in the biz. They are the Blackbird Academy, Yay. Westlake Pro, yep. Avid, yep. DTS, Yay. Lander, Yay. Fab Factory, Yay. Recording Connection, Yay. and Studio 202 DC. Ron. Ron. <laughs> All right, uh, it's time for you, man. It's time to find out the winners in the Pensado Indaba Mix Contest. We love Indaba. They do a great job. They have a great community of which we're a part of and you're a part of. They're serious about servicing you, and we are going to do a bunch more with them. So, Dave, you've been in the in the wood shop, and you've yeah. been going through it. And yeah, really enjoyed it. Had some right, fun. So why don't you announce the second runner-up? Corey Stern. Good job, Corey. So congratulations, Corey. You are the winner. All these Pensado approved brands, a one-year subscription to Lander, um, a perpetual license for audio dynamic separation software, IK multimedia micro monitors. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> you'll get sample tank, amplitude, T Rex, Max, a bunch of stuff. Now that's for the second runner up. How about the first runner up? Stavros Cherolampetis. Very and good. And I hope I did not mess up his name. So say it again Stavros Cherolampetis. Very good. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Well, I might have to have, uh, I was thinking of an alternate version just in case he didn't like that. No, 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 don't do that, don't do that. We, I tried my best. Uh, we love complicated names. Stuff. I'm Ch Trollic. Come Ch on, ain't that easy. Really Trollic good. on a black guy, try living with that. Um, so he wins all that good stuff, plus more Pensado proof things, Tascam monitors and headphones, the AudioNamic stuff, iLoud Micrometer, a bunch of that stuff, but even more. And then there's the grand prize winner. Drum roll, please. Hold it, hold it. And go. My favorite name, Electro Smog, Louis Ceratelli. Oh, great. Oh, he did a great job, by the All way. All right, congratulations. <laughs> so, beyond having the coolest mix and having the coolest name, um, these contests are the coolest things. Congratulations to yeah, all the winners. Yeah. Congratulations to the Pensado branded folks who are all stepped up. Congratulations to the, all the entrants. You, you know, you told me that as you reviewed the work this time, there was a lot of excellent work. Yeah, there was. Yeah. There, there really was. Now, is that, do you think the audience is growing in terms of their skill set? Was that the selection of the track? Was it a combination of the elements? I think this particular track, um, if you were a little bit familiar with the genre, uh, you probably did a little better than if you weren't, okay. but but I don't think that's a negative thing because uh, getting out of your comfort zone can only help you as an engineer. Absolutely. You know, widen the uh, the genre that you can use. You know. Yep. Uh, but all in all, I, I was real happy. Real happy. <clears throat> can I say his name? Yeah. So. Electro Smog, Louis Ceratelli. Uh -huh. We're going to have you on the show in a couple weeks. We'll be in touch with you, and you got all those really cool prizes coming. And best news for all you guys out there, for our beloved audience, we're going to get another Indaba contest going pretty soon. Stay tuned. Not right away, but we got another one coming, right? Good stuff. Again, congratulations Great to all stuff. you guys. Congratulations for your participation. More stuff coming to you. Now, let's meet the Hungarian homie with the German hoopty. He goes by the name of... Chuck 
What's happening, man? How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Have you been climbing recently? Just a little bit. Just did a you little. climb yesterday? I did actually climb yesterday. Oh, you I climbed did? for about four hours. So if you don't know what we're referring to is Changor, um, he used to go to the gym all the time, but now he climbs. You, you climb where you go to the gym, right? Well, so climbing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, gym Tuesday, Thursday. Oh. Do you, do you still, still do that thing where you get like four 25-foot boxes and stack them and then just jump up on top of them? 25 inches maybe, oh. but yeah, <laughs> the cool. box jumps, still I doing them. the heck out of me. It's fun. It's going to piss you off if you work out with him because he just leaves you behind so quickly and you just go, wow, I really am old. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm decrepit, I'm falling apart. <laughs> um, so um, we can't tell him about Nashville yet. We got some things percolating. Uh, but you found an interesting piece of audio tape. What, I did, I what, did. What is the context? So essentially, we're not able to visualize sound. We hear it, and this is a way for us to hear sound. So okay, let's roll Ooh. it. Roll it. I'm going to show you the sound of a clap. And I don't mean some digital depiction of a clap. I mean that when this man's hands come together, you're going to see something that is normally invisible. You're going to see the actual sound wave leaving his hands and traveling outward at 761 miles per hour. The speed of sound. And here it is again. How is this possible? Well, I'll start the explanation not with sound, but with the heat from a lighter. There's a puff of butane, sparks fly, and the fuel ignites. But that shape billowing up from the flame isn't smoke. That's normal air that has been expanded by heat. We're able to see the density change thanks to a technique called Schlieren flow visualization. Here's how it works. You start off with a light shining through a single slit. If you reflect that light off a parabolic mirror, all the rays become parallel. And then you can use another parabolic mirror to refocus that light down to a single focal point. And then, in through the lens of a camera, to make a picture. Now here's the trick. You place some sort of barrier right at the focal point. Now you add something that will distort the air, like a candle. The candle will block the light rays, making a silhouette, and the flame will make light but rising heat will change the density of the air above the candle, and that will bend the light rays. The bent light ray won't pass through the focal point. It will be blocked by the barrier, and the picture will be darker. This technique can be used to see anything that distorts the air. The heat from a hair straightener, for example. Even the heat coming off a human hand. Epidemiologists use it to study sneezes and coughs. Engineers use it to study aerodynamic flow. And sound? Well, that's just another change in air density, a traveling compression wave. So Schlieren visualization, along with a high-speed camera, can be used to see it as well. Here's a book landing on a table. The end of a towel being snapped. A firecracker. An AK-47. And of course, a clap. So there you have it, a kind of interesting way to visualize audio and so on and so forth. We're going to continue to find interesting pieces like that to show this fascinating world that you all are participants in and just how far it expands. Another thing is Master Blaster over here has been very prolific. It seems like you stacked up a bunch of ITLs, mm -hmm. and now all this stuff is coming out of the erudite brain. You, you, have, a, <laughs> you have a good one today. I Which do. one is it today? It's, it's, uh, um, um, as you guys know, most of my into the layers, almost all of them are are excerpted from things I'm working on. You know, I like to, I like to have real world examples because mm -hmm. they're, they're they're current and relevant. And uh, this one impressed me, so I'm gonna share it with you. It's a vocal effect. You might but it's on know. a it's on a big name artist, right? I thought about not saying that, but really? okay, it's a big name artist. So it's not a river. It's not a sea. No, 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 no. no what's no, the other no. body of water could it be? Oh, just toss the ITL. Let, go on and roll it. <laughs> Those of you that have uh, watched some of uh, my Into the Lair segments, you know I love stacking different uh, effects within a, uh, or different, use a lot of different plugins to create an effect. Uh, this one turned out really well. Uh, I, I was working on an artist that, that um, this particular mix didn't make it on their record, but I'm repurposing it for this record, which is uh, my friend, Mac Montgomery. The group is Denim. And, and the song is uh, Bless Your Heart. Uh, we were looking for, Mac wanted me to find a, an effect that matched the song, but also took it to another level. So this is what I came up with. Uh, 
Okay, now here's without it. Pretty cool, huh? So, so basically, this is what I'm doing. Um, I've got um, uh, I've, I've got all these vocals going into this aux here. Um, one of my favorite delays. This 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 delay can get a little complicated. I've got some modulation going on, but you can you can do it without all this all this down here. But if you've got a little bit of programming skills, synth programming skills. You'll, 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 you 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 can get a little more movement, but I don't think that's I don't think that's what we're selling right now. Um, now this is uh, this is my dear friend Manny American. This is his plug-in, and this is this is the reverb that I'm getting. So this this delay is fitting this reverb. Um, you can kind of see that I'm coloring a little bit, a, a little bit of phase, a little bit of distortion. Uh, this distortion is excellent. Everything about this plug-in I love. Manny's a beast. Uh, this is, I don't know why this is on here. Um, this is uh, Joey Sturgis, it's his clipping plug-in. Um, I've maxed it out and, uh, and on every level because I wanted this to have an edge to it. Not a smooth analog distorted edge, we're getting that from the plug-in, from Manny's plug-in. I wanted this to be ugly. Okay, now I'm going to solo just the effect, check this out. <laughs> that's cool that's cool and, and uh, it just gives it just takes that section to a musical level and and accomplished everything that mac wanted it to do uh, i hope but uh, don't be afraid to use different plugins that allow you to clip uh, within the plug-in in a controlled way and, it, and, and just because it says clipping that doesn't mean it can't be musical so do some experimenting find a, a, a way to use it and make your sounds just a little bit different give them a little more edge and, and in a musical way use them to kind of emphasize certain things this is the only spot in the song where this happens so I wanted it to be m kind of magical check it out so our guest software can get you paid. He'll show you how a local Grammy chapter can benefit you. He's an author, a developer, a mastering engineer, Grammy chapter head. He should be just tired as hell. I'm tired but, of hearing his credit. I'm telling you, and I'm not done yet. <laughs> uh, welcome to the place, the one, the only, Gabri Waddell. Hey, man. Hey, man. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for Good having me. Good to have you. What's man, up, you man? want a lemonade or a nap or something? Because you got so many hats. Are you Jamaican? <laughs> man, Memphian. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Even better. Yeah. You, you know, we, we see a lot of folks on this side of the desk who more and more are really super industrious. They have a lot going on, and it seems like Audio is a big place to incorporate a lot of your, a lot of everybody's skills. It's not, you're not stuck to one thing. So you're just one of those guys who has, likes, likes a lot of things going on? Absolutely. I mean, I started as a mastering engineer and I still do that. Right. But, you know, that got me into audio and into this, uh, you know, fascinating world of things that, you know, once you get into, into audio, right. it can get your passions in a, in a pretty deep way. It's a virus. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's actually a really good way to put it, because I think... Mine or his? Um, well, your viruses, there are a number of those. <laughs> I'm talking about the audio one. Penicillin for my own. <laughs> penicillin didn't work. Audio penicillin. Um, but once it's in your system that way, it sort of finds its own way out, correct? Absolutely. Uh, because in your mastering world, which you're being really nice about, but it it's included Rick Ross and Public Enemy and a bunch of different things. But at the same time, you were writing books, correct? That's right. You know, with uh, with my career, when I first started, you know, it was it's in Memphis, so not one of the larger markets like L.A. or New York. Yeah. So you know, it's a it's a hard fought battle, and I didn't uh, 
I didn't study under another mastering engineer. And so once I got... Uh, Were you self-taught? Exactly. Wow. You know, I, I did it the way uh, some of the guys who originated it yeah. did it, you know, just by ex exploring. And so after I got through my career a little bit, you know, I wanted to have more of that experience of importing the knowledge from th these other generations. Mm -hmm. So I started to interview them and talk with them and engage with them. And, you know, I had a, a, a list of just notes and ideas that I started to put together. And, you know, before long, that started to look like a manuscript. And just luckily, it ended up with, the you know, the largest publisher here in the U.S. Is it Miller? Is that who? It's uh, McGraw-Hill. McGraw-Hill, yeah. sorry. Yeah. And no, you were no like worries. one of the youngest authors in that space for them, correct? That's exactly right. Yeah. Also, um, in my opinion, of the great music cities in America, Memphis could be number one or two. Chip's Moment comes out of Memphis with American Recording and the most underrated mm -hmm. human being in music. He pioneered a lot of great stuff. And then we have a mutual friend, Dave Porter, David right. Porter. I think Dave is kind of mad at me right now. Well, but anyway, your, I love you, David. But, but yeah. to your point, though, because I wanted to go down that path a little yeah. bit. Talk about Great music. the rich history, because in your Naris Grammy work, it's not just Memphis. You have Memphis, you have New Orleans, you have some really musical rich sure. territories. Talk about the musical history of those of those kind of communities. Absolutely. I mean, we also have St. Louis in this region. Oh, wow. right. So, you know, when we have our uh, wow. our recording academy meetings, you know, the people that you're sitting across the table from and the people that you're representing there in that chapter, I mean, the history is just is just so deep. I mean, from the uh, the jazz it, it, and just raw creativity that is going on in New Orleans today, and it's gone on historically. Yeah. And then the the way that's traveled up the Mississippi River, and the the soul music and rock history, uh, you know, blues, of course. Sure. When you think about Memphis, and of course, also the the jazz background in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about a, a region that probably has the just the deepest connection to the roots of what people see as I Western agree. music. That's a really good point. I, I just watched that thing on Aaron Neville and Trombone Shorty last night. Just, just amazing. Shoo, so absolutely. do you find yeah. that, because I think that there is, there are things that we're going to talk about today about how a local Grammy chapter can benefit you, and I think it's really important for you to know that. Do you find that the traditions of those musical areas, St. Louis, New Orleans, and Memphis, are carried through and that young people are taking those traditions and reinterpreting them and doing newer things? Do you see, is the music scene just as vibrant or is it is, is it all just historical? What do you see? Absolutely, you know, with um, with my election as, as president mm -hmm. of the chapter in, in our region, I think that it really represented something because, you know, with the history that is, is present, a lot of times, you know, historical figures can be uh, elected to those positions and, um, and, and and it certainly do because it's so strong. Sure. But with me doing software and being from this region, it's it's a different. They're it's a different the thing. corner. As exactly right. We're looking forward, uh, you know, into the future with our city and. Uh, forging a path uh, that really is about the future of music. Good and I think you. that's what Soundways represents is, you know, there's this historical legacy that is has gone on in our area. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we have this motto, serve the music. And we feel that that really embodies what um, the spirit, the spirit that's present there mm -hmm. in the region and bringing that into the brand. Um, uh, no, I was gonna say. <laughs> I do this thing where I, de I, breathe, I breathe like. And then I, Herb goes, oh, I didn't, I, actually, <laughs> I actually didn't hear that this time, but thank you for that information. Um, w one of the things that you touched on, and we're going to get to Soundways, which he's the CEO of, and we'll talk about his company and what they're doing. But um, we've often, with our dear friend Maureen Droney and so on and so mm -hmm. forth, and I really got this from you, when we look at the at Naris and Grammys, and specifically the P&E Wing, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're biased, obviously, but we think the P&E Wing is as important as any other wing in Naris because producers and engineers, without that, you don't have the other stuff. Is that fair to say? Uh, oh, absolutely. So how does a local chapter benefit? By the way, we're the RA in Naris. Exactly. Which A R A S. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> so give, give us a sense of how a local chapter can benefit an upcoming producer, songwriter, how do they get involved? What kind of things do you do and, and what kind of things you look for? You know, you probably have those things where if you could go back to your 20 year old self, you would tell yourself something. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And one of those things I wish I could pipe back through, you know, the past to that early version of myself is that 
I should have engaged with communities earlier yeah. because it's so key. I agree 100%. And with that, you know, so I really encourage that. The events that the p e Wing puts on, you know, you go to those events and it's, it's like family. You know, mm-hmm. after a while you see the people and you, it's just like, it, it's your extended family, mm-hmm. so. And, and, and I think, you know, to, to be specific about what you both are saying, you get jobs from that. You get referrals, you get jobs, you get interviews, you, even if you get interviews that don't go well, you learn what you need to get better at for the next interview. Mm-hmm. And it's just so much, you know, I have, both Dave and I and you are blessed enough that parents and other folks will put young people in our charge to help. And I really like that part of my life right now. And when, you, when you're able to say to somebody, networking is an active you know, verb. It's not a theoretical thing. It's not just being connected on the internet. It is sitting with people, interacting, getting them to know you. That translates to your net worth. That translates to your opportunity yeah, great, to grow. Right? It increases your skill set. Yeah. Is, is that fair? Am I, am yeah. I... I mean, it's the human element is so important throughout all of you know all of music, especially if you're a mix engineer, mastering engineer, tracking engineer. Yeah. I mean, you're always trying to impart that into the music, yeah. and you also have to engage, you know, with actual people. Those stories and yeah. what you know, the interactions that you have, they're, they're priceless. For it's me, really it was. One of the troubles that I had my whole life was um, not coming from a major market. I'm guessing it, maybe the thing, same thing happened with you, but those relationships showed me a pathway to success because mm-hmm. I had no clue how to go from uh, a D-level engineer in Atlanta to Absolutely. an A-level engineer in Los Angeles. But when, you, when you're around people that have done that and people that are doing that, people like Ed C., Rodney Mills, and Mm-hmm. Bill Lowry and all these other people I could name, Tom Wright, they show you a pathway and, mm-hmm. and those those communities are, uh, I, I, I would still be in Atlanta if I had not had that, well, ulti- and which is not a negative thing. I just wanted to be here. Because ultimately you emulate success. That's, you, that's the better way to say it. You, you, you just got to go learn about it. Word it. It's, my, it's my job. <laughs> um, but I don't know anybody successful who doesn't emulate success, God knows, you know, I, all of us had, you oh, name 100%. a few, David Geffen and Barry Gordy and different people were mine. But you can't do that unless you're mixing with people. You can read about mm-hmm. it and you can, and today the internet creates both opportunity and obstacle. Because you can think you're connected but you're sort of disconnected. You're doing it from a distance. You gotta get up and do elbow grease and food mm-hmm. and no, right? Yeah, no doubt, and you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because people will have these strengths and once you start interacting with other people, you know, and you really get out of, out of your own uh, sphere, you're able to find out, you know, these strengths that you didn't know you had. Yeah, yeah. And those start to merge with your other interests. Yeah. I mean, even like here on this show, I think about, you know, all that led up to this and, you know, and the interests that are there and the ability that's there. You, you know, and it, you start to combine those things and mm-hmm. those relationships that you built, and it happens in ways you could never plan. And, I mean, and think about this: true. from two guys who are pathetically weak, and somehow we figured this out. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, not you. <laughs> just, just me. Just the guy in the red shirt. I'm chronically weak. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we go with we, we're weak together. Um, when we sort of got to know each other and started talking about things, and I talked to Maureen, and I, I watch how people are responding not only to you and to your product, what is, what is fascinating is, in the examples we're giving, you get lift from other people. Do you know what I mean? And there's been an enthusiasm about your appointment, an enthusiasm about your product and so, so forth, that I think not only speaks to you, but speaks to the actual product. So somewhere in this evolution of busy Jamaican Gabri, Memph- Memphisian, who has got a lot going on, you decide to start this company, Soundways. Tell, tell us about Soundways. You know, I did a, a plug-in that I licensed to Plugin Alliance. And, yep. Can and, I stop you right there? Oh. I use this plug-in on every mix. I got I got my boys out there that'll, that'll verify. And let me tell you how I know that's true. When, when I was talking to him about you coming on the show, he defined you by your plug-in. He said, that's the dude that did this. No. And I use this all the time. I like, he all, was like, not all the time. passionate about Every it. mix. Right, right, right. He awesome. just does things. That, we talk about that at NAM. That just does things nothing else can do. To the point, which you saw when we were in the green room, he thought you had come by, you guys had hung out and knew each other. That's well, how we, much uh, he uses we, the mix. We, we had planned we had it. Met. Think, right, right, yeah. right, right. But no, I'm, t- I'm just telling you, that he, Dave is never inauthentic about that. And you guys should know that speaks to his product. So 
So you, you, you licensed that to Plugin Alliance, and that, mm -hmm. that became successful, correct? Yeah. Was, the name of that was what? Uh, refinement. refinement. Gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha, bad thing. And That's it ended really up good. on the Universal Audio platform. And, you know, I had gotten into uh, developing audio software during the time of my book. Mm -hmm. And, you know, seeing the success that was there uh, with that plugin, and then also, you know, I could have continued to license things, but it wouldn't have made a symbol in the city of Memphis and in the region right. of this kind of technology. Right. You know, with this, it's, it's uh, you know, people think about where something like this would be uh, developed, and they just don't. Think, think first Memphis. to Memphis, yeah. you know? And I, I want to change that. Like you said, Good the you. symbols are so important. Oh, and, you know, in a city like ours, I wanted to make a, a powerful symbol to show that uh, the possibility with music is wide to, so to redefine that. So important. Good for you. Okay, so you do that, and then all of a sudden, as you're developing more and you're having some success with it, you decide, amongst a number of different companies, to take on metadata and why that's important. Right? Definitely. And, and what, what I love about what you've done is, if you ordinarily hear metadata, you may glaze over it. It may not mean what you need to mean, but. We live by credits. It, and, and, yeah. well, and, and also, you, get, you can get paid by your credits being right, and you can yeah. get not paid by your credit not being correct. Is that right? Absolutely. And with, you know, um, I talk to artists, you know, producers, engineers, and all of them have a story about a missed credit. Yes. And it's a sore spot for so many people. Yes. You know, they work on something. I just had a conversation a couple of weeks ago about, uh, you know, a credit that was missed uh, and it won a Grammy. And the guy doesn't have a Grammy mm. sitting on his shelf because yeah. it just didn't get registered. It was That's just an painful. accident. That's painful. And with that, you know, it's, um, I wanted to try to do something about that. And with, you know, when the credits and metadata issues started to come up, this was years ago, I started following it pretty closely and I actually got involved with the Recording Academy at the very beginning uh, because, um, because I just found that topic really interesting and wanted to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And here, some years down the road, you know, uh, after DDEX formed and uh, this uh, format was uh, published, the REN format, mm -hmm. uh, decided that, you know, it was time to take some action. And, and REN stands for, I'm sorry, Dave, REN stands for what? It's Recording, Recording Information Fund. Notification. Mm -hmm. Got it. So REN M is the plugin used uh, to enter your credits and uh, metadata That's the about the metadata. Plugin. Metadata is important. His plugin will help you. It gets you paid, it gets you credits, it gets a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. It gives you profile. How, mm -hmm. uh, DDEX, uh, how, how, how close are we to actually having the implementation, full implementation of a place to use the information that's on? I, I, I highly 100% support this plugin and I support its use now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to grow and this is, this is, this is the first step we've been waiting for, you hear me bitch about this all the time, mm -hmm. is the first step we've been waiting for forever. Uh, you, you, you recently sat down with Apple and Amazon and Pandora and Spotify and, and about 30 other companies, and they agreed to adopt it. Have any labels adopted it? And, and what's your prediction for when it'll be implemented to a point where we can just go, I finally yeah, use no, my credits? Yes, uh, so just to be clear, uh, DDEX form before we uh, got involved with Ren, right. exactly. um, but with this, you know, um, it can be used right now. If someone is trying to put together their album credits, like the, they're doing their liner notes, mm -hmm. they can use it for that this moment. Right so now. there is a usage that is just this minute, but we're so close because all of those companies were at the table during the formation of DDEX, ah. it's not like a big jump to try to say, okay, well, let's start getting this where it's going to be right. uh, implemented in their back ends because they were at the table there. there. Yeah. The core production bundle and what Soundway's doing is another way for you to get better at your skill set. Let's, let's get the name of the plugin out. It's diagnostic, it's usable now. So, what's the name of the plugin? We're actually going to be giving some away on the show uh, in the near future, and we're also going to do an ITL on it. So. Tell us about it specifically. What's it called? Where can people find it? The whole number. It's called Reveal. Got it. And that's part of the core production bundle. Is that where you're yeah. speaking to here? Yeah, yeah. It, it has the has Reveal, Low Leveler, and AF Monitor, which are three tools for evaluating mixes. Wow. This guy. So when you're like super wealthy, will you still speak with us? Or because <laughs> you're gonna be like the mayor of Memphis and have you started to get information back on on specifically the Rin? part of this in terms of people using it, the interface working for people, ease of stuff, because when I went through the tutorial, 
it seemed to be pretty straight ahead. Plug in these things, you've got a profile, drop down list, plug in other kinds of things, send it to where you need to send it, it will do that. It was diagnostic, you could do it while you're doing your stuff, you didn't have to come out of your session to do it. It's, am I getting that right? Am I oh, yes. Yeah. You know, our yeah. intention there was yeah. to make it just as streamlined as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we spent a lot of time trying to make sure, because you know, um, we started Soundways, we interviewed so many sound engineers. You know, I, I feel like I have a pretty good perspective of what will benefit them. But, in, you know, unless you sit down and really ask, it's, it's hard to get a full perspective. Right. And with this, one of the things that really hit me is talking to sound engineers who have kids at home or, you know, they're married and they, they're working and they work these long hours and they're trying to get home, you know. Right. They're trying to, to get their work done in a, in a quality way, you know, but also efficiently. Yeah. And so with that... Um, you know, we, don't, we didn't want to add more to their yeah. workload. You know, one of my favorite things, though, and, and um, I think, a, I think a, from my chair, a major element of it is it stays with the session, Herb. Mm -hmm. so, so, like, let's say, let's say Leandro's tracking. He fills it out. Then he hands the session off to the next guy that, that in another state, another city. Mm -hmm. It comes up on the session. So now that guy can add his stuff, and then it goes over to Manny to mix. He can put his stuff. Exactly. And then it goes over to my order master, and he can <coughs> put his stuff. So it's, it's, it's communal. Yeah. Right? It, it, That's right. It it stays with the song. Right. So, That's so how, many, how many times have I done, a, done something, and by the time it gets out, mm -hmm. the credit's there's there's one community that has a hard time getting credits done, so this is make it easy, you know. Easier. Well, and also I love that. That's my favorite thing about it, don't you think? Oh yeah, definitely. You know, sharing it like that, it, it being easy and just taking a couple of seconds. Once you set up a profile in it, you're just it's checking into it. the session in two seconds. Can, can, right? I, can I send I it down the road? It's, it's not a Pensado's place, so I don't ask a stupid question. <laughs> um, there's oh, certain, you're way past that. There's office. certain. <laughs> the, 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 thanks, Herb. It was my pleasure. Um, I didn't think you noticed. Um, <laughs> is there a number? There is a number. The RIN is that's a, is that a number that identifies that individual song? And how do I, I, I think I know the answer, but I don't know the answer. It, are we going to have a, a clearinghouse like like for URLs and stuff, that type of thing, where where, where there's an assigned code or number to the song and, and that and that's how you track it forever is that what the what the ddex is doing or with the ren basically it defined a, a schema of how um how this information should be organized mm -hmm. so there's all these tags there's validation checking there's all these things to make sure that the information is structured properly mm -hmm. so it can be ingested properly uh, ren recording information notification it's it's not uh it, it's not a a, a number but rather a format where all this metadata can be held. Exists. Exactly. Got it. Do you think that maybe at some point there would be a number that seems like a, like we have those in order to, um, you know, I don't know. Well, maybe maybe within within Renim the the plugin there uh -huh. is a number you can enter the ISRC. That's that's what. Yeah. Absolutely, and there's also another one uh, the ISWC, and with that the distinction is that the ISRC identifies a recording. Okay. And then the ISWC identifies a musical work, so that's the right. song. And those those are in in, in usage now, right? Abs definitely. Okay, so so that, that yeah, that's that's incredible. Uh, that's a game changer. As you right? Yeah, no, de I, I, definitely. With this, you know, it's been such a long term objective, and to have something that really gets to it. And people think about you know, sometimes they try to over engineer solutions, and you know, I know the yeah. the blockchain thing, and really blockchain is a great idea, and I got way into uh, cryptocurrencies at one point and actually did an, uh, an alternative to, to Bitcoin. Uh, and so I got very much into, uh, into cryptocurrencies and into the blockchain. Mm. But with this, I feel like it really, sometimes the most simple and elegant solutions are, are best. And with Absolutely. this, just sending it along with the recording, mm -hmm. it's just nothing, nothing easier than that. You don't have to store everybody's data on your computer. Mm, right. You just store your it, stuff and send it along. Send is along. Naris, it, you get the feeling that Naris is supporting this or are they outright supporting it? Um, I can't speak for Neris uh, on that in that way right now, but I mean the support, you know, is it's um, it is it's there. I mean, yeah. we have the way we're. I'm being asking if you need a little prodding from the. No, from I'm the, on an email chain. He's got a lot of support in a okay. lot of important places. Uh, yeah, I, I I see what's going on. I see it 
picking up and going places in response to it, which is really amazing, both inside the community and then external people who are looking, who could either be critical or not critical, and they're all deciding this is the stuff. And, and friends we know, Kevin Becca and Pro Tools Expert, you know, different folks are saying, yo, check this out. Yeah, you know, I was so amazed last week. It was shared on Pro Tools Expert, and they mm -hmm. wrote uh, a blog post on it, mm -hmm. yeah, and it was it. their, yeah. oh, cool, it was their most shared um, uh, post about a software hardware product so ever. Timely. Yeah, it was even more shared than Pro Tools 12 when it was uh, announced. That's amazing. Yeah. Isn't that amazing. The the viral element of this. Well, Justin, well, the boys are amazing. Well, but the other the other part of that speaks to what our audience you know should know about this. Um, one. Your credit information is how you define your career. It's how sometimes people look you up, sometimes how people hire you, how they'll know what you do. It, as he pointed out, uh, whether you're included in awards you should be awarded, how you can raise your rate. Um, there's so many things that credit information, and honestly, and I say this as your manager, when I do transactions on behalf of Dave right now, nobody asks about credits. Nobody. Nobody goes, and how would Dave like to be credited? Nobody. Like, it's just not, for engineers, um, it's not top of mind. And I think it is for producers because that will get listed in Billboard or that will get listed in some place and so on and so forth. So it's really a critical thing that you've come up with. And from what I've read, your solution seems to be the most elegant, simple, smart, cut-to-the-chase way as other people who have observed the other companies have tested all those things. I agree things. 100%, so, and it's free for now. For now. Yes. Yeah, I know Gabri. Gabri's a capitalist, so it's, it's, it's free well, for he should, now. He should get rewarded for it. Yeah. It, always yeah. will be, it always will be free. If we do introduce a, a pro version or something like that, the spirit of this and with metadata and the story and the way it's developed, uh, it, we always have to have a free version of this. It's nice. vital to the cool. idea of it. That, that, cool is, that is very smart of you. Um, what the hell do you have time to do with all this mm -hmm. other stuff going on? My yeah. goodness. Are you still still wanting to write books? Still, But right now, this is your focus, yeah. launching this and building the company? Yeah, with, with Soundways, that, that definitely has the focus. With that, it's, you know, we want to solve those most painful problems. With, with the core production bundle, it's, uh, it's an elegant solution to translation issues. Mm -hmm. With, uh, with Renim, it's a, 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 a very easy to use solution for credits and metadata. Mm -hmm. So it's having the yeah, ear to the ground about what is the most painful thing that people are dealing with. What, what is it you know, that we can solve that really makes a difference in their life? And then of course, there's, there's, um, there is uh, still mastering work. I still have to do that. So it's, it's limited. I'm, I'm doing only you know, uh, certain artists. I have to really want to do it. Sure. Um, but it's but that part is vital as well because you know with this um, that part of the thinking is what allows us to do these things. You that, have to stay in the game, don't you? Definitely. To keep your chops sharp. I mean, you always talk about this. Well, I think I think for, for me and him, it, it it helps to be in the middle of it to know how, how to stay current. You uh, know, a hundred percent. The um, um, now I want to. Where would people who are interested in finding out about it, where would they go to? They go to your site? Where, where is that? Mm -hmm. It's soundways.com. So if that's complicated, yeah. you're, you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> uh, forgive me, but Stonebridge, right? Oh, yes, for the mastering, it's Stonebridge Mastering. Yeah. And, and that, that's your shop. Yeah, that's, that's right. Just, right. Describe me a little bit about your uh, chain. All right. So, you know, um, what my chain represents a lot. A lot of it is relationships. It goes back to that. Like you see a lot of uh, crane song gear in there. Mm -hmm. And Dave Hill was one of my early inspirations. Love I, I love the gear. You know, I love mm -hmm. what's there, and I love the sound that it gives me. But you know, having that gear there represents uh, uh, a turning point for me. Mm -hmm. and, and knowing Dave and the insight that he's given me, you know, that's that's a part of it. That's you know, there's very a cool sign. Think that way. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, go ahead. I mean, oh, no out. worries. You know, it's um, there's a Sontech EQ and there's Burgess McNeil, and I would have these phone calls with Burgess. And another instance of just you know insight being imparted as this person that was there when you know when EQ was was get first getting started. Sontech, man, that's Massenburg territory too. John, where you got a couple questions for our guests? This first one's from Chris Love. Where did the coding journey begin, and do you ever see yourself creating a plugin outside of audio? 
So with coding, um, it started really early for me. Uh, you, you know, in my house, we had one of, those, one of those Texas Instruments computers that you hooked up to the television. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> and there was a book. You know, if I wanted to play a video game, I had to type in the code from the book. Oh, so, you know, my cool. very early, you know, I er, had, early. I had one, too, and a Commodore 64. Ah, yeah. So that's how it began for me. And then throughout my teens, you know, I was, I was coding. Um, mm. So, uh, Oh, yeah, that's, that's fascinating. Yeah, back, back then it might be exaggerated to call it coding <laughs> well, <laughs> compared I mean, to now. But it was the early but now you have C plus plus, right? Yeah. yeah, that was you know back back that time it was it was basic you know yeah. basic sure. programming. It was sure. so much fun, wasn't it? Yeah, no doubt. I felt like I was a computer genius. Well, and to to both your points, you know, to the degree that we have dealt with Silicon Valley, uh, folks that have some coding in their background, because we met four or five specific audio engineers who went to boot camps mm -hmm. and coding and stepped in and started making a great living, still doing audio, but doing it from the context of having coding backgrounds and so on and so forth. So I, I think it's a skill set good for today. Give us another one. This one's from Terrell Lane. What is your favorite spatial tool for mastering? Spatial tool? You know, um, it makes me think of, um, of Bob Katz's Sheppy, and that was another instance of, you know, it was a... A, a, a processor that motivated me to look deeper. As a mastering engineer, it came from a mastering engineer, and that was just inspiring to me. And when he licensed it to Universal Audio, another another moment that, that I'll, ne I'll never forget. Was he from Memphis? Oh, no, Bob Katz is down in Florida. I just I, love the name. Say the name New York, though, oh, Bob Katz. Isn't he from New York? Bob Katz. I like he that. spent some time in New York, from what I understand. Uh, but yeah, he's in Florida with um, Digital Domain, is his oh, company cool. now. Okay. okay. All right, uh, Mr. Pitcherman, are you are you ready for him? Now we haven't had a Southern guy for a minute. If we stick together, I'm gonna go easy on. Well, yeah, two Southern guys. <laughs> Not. He's he's got a, he, but he's got a smooth Bayou Southern. Yours is a little Florida edgy Southern because there's well, different is, there's different kinds of Southern, let's, right? Let's be clear. I live in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. That's kind of mine. Let me be real clear here. Mine is fake Southern. I, I'm. I'm from South Florida. I had to, you I get had mad. to earn this accent. No, the hard when you get way. mad, it's real Southern. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, Kentucky's like moonshine Southern and yeah. child tobacco. So there's, you know, that's me. So we got three Southern boys. Uh, so so don't embarrass us. Knock this out of the park. Oh, he's okay, moving. you ready? Yeah, I am. Pitch it up. Here we go. Reverb. Uh, lexicon. Ooh. Piano. Uh, all throughout the frequency range. Ooh, he's smooth. He's good, Herb. He's, he's smooth. Good. He's smooth. You notice that he'll throw you off by just shaking his head, knowing that he hit you hard. Once we started talking gear and he came to life. Yeah, it's a head fake. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay, cool. Strings. Um, they can get really bright, so you need to make sure that they sound good and put the right mic on them. Mm. Or check them on your frequency chart. That was the right answer. Uh, it's a southern um, off. He's got a beautiful frequency chart. You got to check it out. Mm. Uh, bass. Uh, can be misleading if it's too loud. It obscures the rest of the frequency spectrum. Snare. Um, you know, 3K, got to keep it, got to keep that crack and aggressiveness. Um, got to make sure that it uh, drives the song and, and sometimes can be a bit rude, but so, I mean, so vital. 808. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, I mean, it, it's going back to the beginning of it all. Ooh. Lead vocals. Um, probably the highest priority thing to focus on when you're mixing. Love that. Horns? Uh, Memphis horns. Yeah, you go. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, answer. yeah great answer. answer. Absolutely. Stereo bus? Um, my life. <laughs> In mastering. If, if your mastering facility caught fire, not including computers, children, or small pets, what would you rescue first? Hard drive. My clients. Did I say hard drive? I meant to say hard drive. Try again. Okay. Um, it's, uh, I'd have to get the Sontec. Yeah, I think I would too. That's yeah. a it, it, I've noticed nobody has said their Pensado mug. <laughs> nobody has said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive That's on this and take them any. <laughs> That could be a problem that we have them Make all. sure I get one before. We, absolutely. We want yeah. you to have one. So pretty smooth for a Memphis boy. Came out, you know, the, the sports thing, ran the bases smooth. And so, but did you notice the pattern? Like he went from head fakes 
to then elongated answers, which and, it, and yeah, I think those answers were short and tight. Yeah, but but if you notice, there's a specific. Gabri has this quiet kind of strategy thing where he's just constantly getting you, but you don't know because he just seems so charming and so. <laughs> I pre, I'm a Southern boy. I pick it up. It's cool, smooth, brother. Man, smooth, thank you. cool, cool, cool. <laughs> um, now the other really critical part before we go is. We had had some preliminary discussions because there's a, this little web show based in L.A. It's called mm -hmm. Consalva's Place. And its host, you had talked about coming down for the big Memphis, some, some sort of event that's held out on the street where we could. Are we still thinking about that potentially? We're still thinking about that. Okay. We still Absolutely. Do. Let me know. I know the people. I can get in contact with them if you need. I would love to have you down to Memphis. Well, I'm being really, like I've done Memphis and I've done New Orleans. I've done San Francisco. <laughs> And of all the places we go, we go to a lot of places, that is an underserved area where we have a lot of fans that will come to Nashville from those areas or will come to some other event that we do. I would love for yeah. us to be able to get to them and do some, plus we probably have some mutual friends, PJ Morton in New Orleans, and there's a lot of, you know, you guys know David Porter together, and so there's, Memphis I think there's a lot we can Memphis do stuff. Great city. Well, great not only city. that, what people don't know about Memphis is that it's a tech center as well, too. There's a lot going on in Memphis that, that needs to be exposed. Yeah, no Correct. doubt. I mean, we, you think about the way uh, an organization like St. Jude would impact a, yes. a right. community. Yes, that. indeed. Uh, FedEx and the amazing that's inf right. information systems it has to drive that. That's I mean, right. that's, that's part of the story that's going on yeah, there as well. Absolutely. And you are, too. Um, I think that it is always inspiring for us to get not only smart folks, but passionate people who, who don't forget the fact that this is about creativity and humans. You know, you've never left the city. You've had opportunity to do that. You're home, you know, homeborn. You've gone up the ladder of success. You're in, you're in various places of influence and so on and so forth. You're making decisions that come back to the city as a benefit. Um, we honor that kind of stuff, which is why when we first met, I was like, dude, we got to we got to figure this out. We got to get involved. So, um, from from Pensado in place, um, hats off, man, to what you're doing. You know, you got a fan with us. We want to be supportive of it. We're gonna do an ITL together on on what's going on, and we're gonna make sure that you guys can um, get hold of this uh, uh, some of the software stuff that he's doing is so incredible. We're gonna be doing that really shortly. Uh, we're fans, Gabri. Congratulations, bro. Man, thank you. Thanks for having me on. No, man, and it's not the last time. We're coming down your way because you're having us down. So we're, we're chong, we're booking some flights. Let's do it. We're heading to Memphis. <laughs> Let's work on this. Dave, take us home. Well, to extend that thought a little bit, go back to my, one of my early thoughts. Sometimes the hardest thing to do is just find a pathway out and yep. have an example of it. You yep. know, I had some good ones. How about you? Same here. And I, I just copied them. And then I think you, and you and I came through a lot of this together. Mm -hmm. Um, and Gabri, I think you probably say the same thing. Sometimes things work, sometimes they don't. Yeah. Every time you fail, you're learning how to win. Yeah. But if you don't try, if you don't go for it, you can't get there. The best way to overcome failure is just give it a different name. <laughs> it's rolling. another form of success. Say goodbye. We'll see you next week. See you guys. Peace.